Hello and welcome to Stretford Paddock. My name is Casey and we are outside Old Trafford on this what is a cold November morning. Let's get right, right into it. Let's just talk about what's been going on because obviously United aren't playing. We are in an international break that many people are saying, why are we even having it? And you see, you see last night it happened. Like Obviously Joe Gomez got injured in training for England. Nathan Ake for Netherlands last night got injured with a hamstring. This is exactly what people were worried about. They were worried that injuries were going to come along. And it seems to be the case that obviously England haven't played yet, but it might not be the last we hear of people getting injured. And hopefully that means that no United players fall into that fate, which was lucky because apparently Bruno Fernandes was on the bench last night for Portugal and he didn't come off it. So he stayed off the pitch in what was a 7-0 thrashing of Andorra. Lots of people getting on the score sheet, but not Bruno Fernandes because he didn't play. But someone who did get on the score sheet is Donny van der Beek for Netherlands. He scored the equaliser against Spain. It kind of prompted your ex expected reaction off United fans on social media of this is why he should be playing, which I feel like every time Donny van der Beek does something, we could see him doing a keepy uppy in training and everyone would be like, oh, I wish he could bring that to a football pitch against Brighton for 90 minutes. It kind of poses the question of what our best midfield is again. Again, Donny van der Beek seems to be in the plans long term. Solskjaer keeps talking about being in the plans for long term. Um, but at the moment, our settled midfield has seemed to have gone back to the Fred McTominay, Fernandez sort of trio and maybe Donny van der Beek will find his way in somehow there. But we'll have to wait and see about that. Obviously, England are going to play later in the week. And we've now found out that Marcus Rashford is going to rejoin the England team after um, after not being available originally through injury. Uh, he apparently picked up a shoulder injury in the match against Everton at weekend. And when he went down, I was like, well, that's the injury that will keep him out of international fixtures. You always see it like, you always see those little like, those small injuries, they seem to play on and be fine. And then obviously that comes about, they're injured. So yeah, but Marcus Rashford, the sort of warrior that he is, he always wants to play on through injury. We've seen it with United and now we're seeing it with England. He's now going back to the England squad. And apparently he's going to be part of the squad that is in their three uh, games this week, uh, this week or these last two weeks. There's one, it's a friendly against Republican Ireland. And then they have Nations League matches against Belgium and Iceland. Again, I don't see why they, these matches have been played. Obviously, we're seeing a massive fixture congestion at the moment, and it's just going to lead to more injuries. Like, obviously, there's a whole thing of everyone's kind of laughing at Liverpool now because they have no centre backs and they have no defence. And I think Andrew Robertson of their first choice defence is dealing with injuries. I personally, um, well, I think mo like most people don't actually want to see players get injured. And I feel sorry for Joe Gomez, and I hope he has a. He's a young prospect, and I hope he has the recovery that a young prospect deserves, and that's an honest opinion but at the same time like we're seeing these injuries happen and Liverpool are having it for the first time where they're, all these injuries are happening to their players in the, like, the last two years but if it happened to one of ours we'd, be, we'd probably have the exact same response of why are we playing these games why do these games exist um, so we'll have to see what happens there but on the, on the topic of injuries um, Luke Shaw will reportedly miss out for an entire month with what is a hamstring injury. Now, this obviously opens the door for Tellez to take back that first team role we thought he'd have when he signed, but he obviously got his introduction to the United team delayed by um, a coronavirus, a, a non-symptomatic, an asymptomatic coronavirus, but a coronavirus are the same. He had his introduction delayed. And what actually looked like it was going to be a harder reintroduction into the first team after Luke Shaw had what has been a succession of pretty good games in the Premier League. I thought he played really well against Arsenal um, going forward. He was obviously putting balls into the box. He put in that Maguire chance that Maguire put just wide, but he was putting in really good crosses. And then we saw against Istanbul, Bashakir, he put in a cross for Martial. That was one of the first headed goals I've seen in a long time. And then at weekend, he was like, ah, I'll do it again. Why not? And he put in another cross and we scored again. And that's the thing, like Luke Shaw seems to have been getting a lot better chances going forward and he's been do putting in crosses into the box which I feel like it's it's taken Tellers I put a tweet on Twitter I was like Tellers has been teaching him how to cross over Zoom but it seems to be that sort of case it seems to be the, the thought of an attacking left back coming in and being like you can do this has been like to Luke Shaw well 
yeah, that's what I can do. He used to do it at Southampton and now he seems to have been doing it the last few games. But as what usually happens with Luke Shaw is he gets injured for a prolonged period of time and then when he comes back, he seems to be back to square one in terms of his fitness, in terms of his playing ability and in terms of where United fans see him in this sort of hierarchy. So obviously, Tellez, free run at the first team for a month. Hopefully, he comes out, he whips those crosses in, he gets us those goals and it'll be a brilliant stint in the first team and it'll give Solskjaer something to think about when Shaw comes back. Moving on to another player who is on the fringes of United at the moment, who hasn't seemed to be getting any game time, and that is Jesse Lingard. Now, according to Rob Dawson at the ES, uh, ESPN, at the ESPN, at ESPN, um, Jesse Lingard has apparently parted company with me, the super agent, the one that every man in football loves, every manager, every football player, Mino Raiola. Apparently, he's parted company with Mino Raiola and he will now be represented by members of his family. Apparently, they leave on good terms. It wasn't any sort of falling out over any dispute. It was just uh, he sought for a change of agent. He thought he'd change, uh, look at his options elsewhere. So he's apparently moved on to his family. But Mino Raiola, he's now parted company, which is kind of this case of most United fans were hoping it. They don't really want Mino Raiola having his hooks in any more players. But we've, we've said on this channel before, the sort of case to be made is you're going to have these super agents no matter what. If you were like, we're not going to deal with Mina Raiola, we're not going to deal with Jorge Mendes, we're not going to deal with uh, Pini Zahavi, who is another big agent at the moment, which is Telles's agent and brokered that deal, we'd be like, well, where do we end up? We end up with no one um, because that is just how they deal with every day. Every young player from the last decade has now been picked up by one of these agents, especially when you look at the Portuguese league, especially when you look at Italy and that sort of case, they all get picked up. If they're good, they're going to get picked up by a big agent. So we're going to have to deal with them. But that's one player who maybe might want to see his way back into the United team. Jesse Lingard's had stints where he's looked good, he's looked sharp. He's one of those players who uh, creates space. He moves well. He obviously hasn't been getting the assists or the goals. And obviously there's that joke that he wasn't going to score all season. And then in the last minute against Leicester, he doesn't... Uh, Kasper Michael goes and makes a massive mistake puts Lingard clean through and that man who put a bet on Lingard not scoring all season lost it <laughs> which was a brilliant thing to see and it was a really happy moment and everyone was happy for Jesse at that point but yeah at this moment in time he's not seen his way back into the first team and this might be a move to do that now this wouldn't be the spiritual successor to Paper Talk if I didn't bring up what was in the headlines for most of this week and that is the return of our boy, our, our Portuguese superstar, original, not now Bruno Fernandes, but the original Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, it's been in the papers that apparently Juventus want to see, maybe wanting to cash in. They've Apparently, he's only got a contract to 2022, and in order to extend it, they'd have to pay massive wages in what is looking to be this very extended twilight of his career. It's been saying it's the twilight of his career for the last three years, and it's probably going to be saying it's the twilight of his career for the next four. It's sort of like a Zlatan Ibrahimovic situation where he's in Italy banging him in, and we're like, oh, well, we said he was finished about two years ago. Still seems to be scoring 20-odd goals, but um, apparently United have made an offer to Cristiano Ronaldo that he is looking at, he's considering, and if Juventus look to cash in on him, we might see a return of CR7 to Old Trafford. Now, this has a mixed response. Obviously, Ronaldo could come back, could score three goals in 60 and could tarnish that legacy that he built up over a, over six, seven years at United and it was a fantastic time for all the fans involved. But at the same time, he could come in and he could be the absolute superstar that he was before. The superstar has been consistently throughout his career and scored 20-odd goals and we could be like, fantastic. We're winning the league again. Woohoo. What a, what a fantastic thing. But um, it's kind of a mixed response. Obviously, Ronaldo will bring us short-term success, but every team he's been at, he's taken goals away from and development away from the players that have been there. We saw it at Benzema, now at Real Madrid, banging in goals because he's the one taking shots and he's the one that's right on. And he's not got Ronaldo shooting nine shots a game. We've seen it with Dybal at Juventus. He scored 20-odd goals before he came. He's now relegated to the bench. He's scoring a goal every once in a while for them. It's sort of like, it'll take away the development, but it'll probably guarantee United some sort of success in a cup or even the Premier League um, with his arrival. So it's going to be interesting to see you want massive wages. We've rounded all that up. 
But again, it's just speculation. Ronaldo, since he left, has been linked back. And it has always been a story whenever he's been like, oh, maybe, I'm, maybe I want to move on, maybe I want to make a new challenge, maybe I want to return home sort of thing. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But yeah, this has been the news outside Old Trafford. Hope you've been entertained. Hope you've been informed. Hope everything that we've been saying. Hope Well, ask us, do you think that internationals should be going on in this climate with obviously the increased fixtures and the increased number of injuries. So let us know in the comments, let us know, hit a like on the video, subscribe if you haven't. This has been Stretford Paddock again, I've been Casey and I'll see you next time.